Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Before starting we would like to specially thank Daniel Walter for being our patron for one year now. Your support means a lot to us, thank you. This week we received two patrons, Michael and TJ Rapp. We all decided to bring some of our pet decks to the table. Michael brought his spicy Lazav the Multifarious. Baal picked his old Darian King of Kjeldar. Leitu is loving them coin flips and pulled a Kraken Kaidel Brew. Finally, TJ brought his own personal Nahila the Blade Blossom. Michael won the Spell Table dice and Mulligan down to 6, keeping it to Larry West and the Dark Six Shores. Arcane Signet is his only ramp, Thassa's Oracle needs no introduction, while Peter's Grasp is great at stealing and wincon, or maybe getting something to help on his plans, while Windfall can refill his hand or maybe disrupt other players' plans. He sent Doomsday to the bottom. Bal kept an okay hand with two planes and a gemstone caverns. Angel's Grace is great versus Thoracle lines, Apostle of Purifying Light is a Skuz in white, Intrepid Hero is mostly a Kronk killer, which is unfortunate for this match, and he bottom Soul Warden. Later kept two lands, Island and Wooded Foothills, Everflowing Chalice and Mana Vault as Ramp and a possible turn 1 Remora. Preordain and Gitaxian Probe are good cantrips, especially if copied by Crack. Finally, TJ kept three lands, Marsh Flats, Polluted Delta and Sacred Foundry. Faburo Elder for extra ramp, but no other creatures for Eldritch Evolution, which could maybe fetch the Revy for the win, a campaign with Silence and Fluster Storm for protection and maybe win from there. Let's split the stack. Starts, Ball announces his Gemstone Caverns and unsure what to pitch, he exiles the planes. Michael starts his turn with a Dark Sleek Shorts and passes. Ball goes for his turn playing a planes and casts an Apostle of Purifying Light before passing. Late begins his turn with an island and a fish everyone loves to hate. In response, Michael fires a mystical tutor for a dark ritual, thinking on some mind games. TJ simply plays a polluted delta and passes. Michael plays a tap to Larry West and passes. Baal fails to draw land and swings the apostle at Michael before passing. Later he said he didn't profit from Remora, so he pays for it and plays a wooded foothills, cracking it for a taiga. He then casts a mana vault and we're back at TJ. He isn't drawing fuel, so he plays a marshlets and passes. Michael also fails to draw land and not waiting to feed on the fish, he simply passes. In his end step, Bile exiles latest fetch, forgetting about Michael's tutor. He fails to draw land and swings at Michael for two again, fearing possible adnaus in the near future. He passes. Late still pays for the Remora. He plays a forest and casts a dry carpet of flowers, hoping to reap some value later. In his end step, TJ cracks the marsh flats, testing the waters for an agent, but manages to fetch a blood crypt. He then cracks the Polluted Delta for another non-island, a Godless Shrine. In his turn, he plays an untapped Stomping Ground, taking two, and casts this beautiful Altar of Naila, from Mike's set from Playing With Power. Check it out! Mike finally gets Third Land, an island, to which Late rejoices. Figuring Late would keep paying for Remora, Michael casts his Arcane Signet, not paying for the fish. In his end step, Bile exiles Mystical Tutor with the Apostle. Bile is increasingly more resentful of his speech to the Caverns, as he attacks Michael again before passing. Late finally decides to cast some stuff so he doesn't pay for the fish. He plays a Rejuvenating Springs and adds red from the carpet to cast the new best red god, Birgi. He then proceeds to cast an Everflowing Chalice for zero, triggering Birgi for an extra red. He starts counting Storm just in case, and then casts Krark so everyone knows now we're in for a treat. He then casts Gitaxin Pro, paying to life, getting a red mana from Birgi but losing the Krark roll, returning the spell to his hand. He pays two life again, getting one more red but losing the roll again. Third time's the charm, getting the probe copied and seeing both TJ and Michael's hands. He then casts Preordain for another red, but a failed coin flip, and taps his last blue mana trying to dig for some outlet to all this stormy mana, but fails again, so casts the Sylvan Library before passing. TJ shocks himself for two with the Sacred Foundry. He casts Faberal Elder and attacks Michael since he's representing Adnau's mana. Michael plays a Bloodstained Mire and casts Lazav. He scries to the top and then casts his Dark Ritual following it with a Praetor's Grasp at late. He secretly exiles a Brain Freeze and passes. In his end step, Bal casts a Path to Exile and after some pondering, targets Birgi to stop any more shenanigans. Late gets an island from the Trouble. Bal fails to draw another land and passes without attacking to prevent Nahila from coming his way. Late gets pinged by the Vault and pays 8 life with a Library for 2 extra cards. He adds blue from Carpet and casts Preordain. Crack rolls unfavorably, and, like before, third time's the charm, he gets to finally preordain twice. He plays a wind sweat teeth and casts Kaidel before passing. TJ starts his turn like every other, taking 2 damage for a non-island shock, overgrown tomb. 
He casts Vexing Shusher and proceeds to attacks. Nyila at Michael and three warriors at Baal. He passes. Michael draws and cracks his fetch for a Snow Swamp. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Lazav. He then casts Dimir Guildmage and passes. In his end step, Baal fires a due respect, which he was saving for some dockside lines, but he really wants to eat those lands. After drawing 7 cards and no lands to be found, he casts a Curse Totem and passes. Late is pinged again and draws no extra cards from the library. He cracks the fetch to ship them back and gets a tropical island. He plays an island and passes with 7 suspicious mana up. TJ plays a planes and casts an arcane signet, finally getting access to blue mana. He swings with 3 warriors, getting 3 more, 2 go at Michael and 4 go at Baal. He passes with some interaction up as well. Michael plays another island and casts a shock dream render. He activates them, targeting TJ, who mills a crypt, two lands and his own Ashiok. He passes to Baal, who is enjoying the view, and casts Pearl Diamond before passing. Late pays to untap the vault and pays 8 to draw 2 extra. He casts a Chromatic Star and goes to his second main phase to add 2 blue from carpet and cast a Baral before passing. TJ draws and casts a Soul Ring. He changes his plans to beatdown mode. He swings with his 5 warriors at Ashok, getting 5 more, that go at Baal's face as his totem is preventing him from winning. On his second main phase, he casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing a token, and gets a Stoneforge Mystic, which in turn gets a Skull Clam. He casts it and since late knows of his Fluster Storm, lets it resolve. He equips it onto a warrior, drawing 2, then another 2, and then plays a forest to equip again and draw 2 more. He then casts a Dockside Extortionist and late fires his Force of Will, since TJ is tapped out. He pitches a swan song and loots with Baral. Michael draws another kitty and casts Jace Wielder of Miseries. Suddenly, everyone's flashbacking their life choices. He upticks it and. That's it, just mills himself for two and draws a card. Oof, that was close, especially considering Baal still has that Angel's Grace, but he's tapped out. He plays another island and passes. Baal draws the ninth card this game and. He'll be able to get lands next turn, as he casts a land tax and passes. Late is getting low on his life, so he just draws one from the library. He is deeply sad by not having outlets to all this mana. He plays a Flooded Strand and goes to his second main phase, getting 3 red from carpet. He cracks his fetch for a Volcanic Island and cracks his Chromatic Star for red to draw a card, but finds nothing, so he just passes. TJ plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs for a Watery Grave. He plays a Sieg River Cutthroat and goes to combat, attacking all 10 warriors and Feyboro at Baal, who jumps the Tree Folk. At the end of combat, Late fires his Cyclonic Rift to try to prevent TJ from drawing a bunch with Skull Clamp. However, Clark goes. He says no. TJ is free to draw and sacrifices 3 warriors total for a whopping 6 cards in. He then fires a Silence and Late responds with a Fluster Storm, which Clark actually copies this time around. At this point, everyone actually forgot about Cyclonic Rift, so they're all counting one less Storm, but it doesn't change the outcome in any way. TJ then responds with his own Fluster Storm. Late has no more interaction, so he does pay for the storm triggers in order to force TJ to pay for his or let silence be countered. TJ lets silence be countered and actually pays for two copies of Fluster so Late can't loop so much with Baral. This way, Late loots twice, notably discarding a pass in flames. TJ equips the Skull Clamp onto another warrior for two more cards and goes to his end step, triggering Sieg for another card. He discards a bunch of good cards, which leaves the table wondering about those juicy seven. Michael plays a Morphic Pool, casts a Doomsday, which suddenly means a simple Oracle can win the game considering all his devotion. TJ ponders for a bit, but fires a Force of Negation, pitching a Pact of Negation. He upticks Jace on himself and follows it with a Mana Vault. He casts Lazav, scrying to the top and passes to Baal. On his upkeep, Lentax finally gets him some lands, one of which was actually on the top. He plays a Plains and passes holding on to White's new identity. Flash, right? Late sees an opening and pays 8 to draw 2 extra cards. He starts things up with a Gilded Drake targeting Nyila. TJ responds with a Deflecting Swat, targeting one of his warriors instead. Late then fires a Cyclonic Rift onto the Cursed Totem, triggering Krark, and actually manages to get a copy from it, which he targets Faber Elder. In response, TJ casts Path to Exile onto Kaidel, and Late gets a Mountain from it. He goes to his second main phase, adding 3 blue with Carpet. With it, he casts Song of Creation, which resolves. He proceeds to cast a Mox Opal, drawing two cards, then a Mox Amber, drawing two more. He then casts Opt, drawing two more, and Krark bounces to his hand. Not bad still. He casts Opt again, drawing two more, and Krark says no again. He then casts Mana Crypt, drawing two more, followed by a Soul Ring, drawing two more. He then casts Old Breacher, and everyone sees where this is going now. He then casts Wheel of Fortune, drawing two. 
Baal preemptively responds with an Avon Mind Sensor which resolves and follows it with an Angel's Grace, hoping that Late does fizzle and gets to discard his whole hand to Song at his end step. Clark's trigger actually bounces the wheel, so Late has to cast it again, and he does, drawing two more from the Song of Creation. He still has two land drops to hit that wheel, but he doesn't need to as Clark found its thumb and its upwards. He draws 7 and gets 21 treasures, then discards and draws another 7, getting 21 more treasures. He then casts Lion's Eye Diamond, drawing 2, then a Ponder, drawing 2 and getting copied. Alas, he found what he needed, he casts Aether Flux Reservoir, and despite Angel's Grace effect, he's able to gain 150 plus life to be able to kill TJ and Michael and wait for Ball's upkeep to kill him, through passing flames, wheels and more and more spells. GG. After this weird game, we managed to do another one and actually showcase it as well. TJ won the die roll this time around. He kept quite the explosive hand, with a misty rainforest and a snow forest for lands, mana crit and mana vault for ramp, and the first allows him for a turn 1 Naila. The best one CMC Walker, Deathrite Shaman, and Draneth is great at delaying other people's commanders and preventing breach lines. Demonic Consultation can be used aggressively to try to win with something like a Derevi, or maybe just wait to draw the Oracle. Michael kept a more controlling hand, with an exotic orchard, an island and a snow island. Walking Ballista is a finisher for a dramatic scepter, spell pierce and fist guardianship are a good ship in direction, while buried alive can get him the pieces to come off with Lazav. Baal kept a more aggressive hand, with a cavern of souls, a merry the sky ruin and a plains. Sarah Ascendant is great at putting early pressure on house players, Thalia a Reticathar is good at slowing opponents down and Source of Plushers is great removal. Gideon of the Trials is great to stop Thoracle lines if well protected. Finally, Late kept a risky one lander with a Misty Rainforest, but Mystic Remora and Preordain can help on getting those land drops, as well as Thrill of Possibility and Rite of Flame can also help on getting an early time twister to screw with everyone's mulligan plans. Baral is good looting potential as well as a good cost reducer for storming turns. Let's see how this one unfolds. TG starts with a Mana Crypt, plays a Misty Rainforest, cracks it for his team vents and casts a Naila turn 1. Michael plays an Exotic Orchard and passes. Baal was planning on turn 1 Sarah Ascended, but fires swords to plushers at Naila to avoid deflecting swords and increasingly bigger presence from TJ. Late plays and cracks Wooded Foothills for a Volcanic Island and casts a Mystic Remora. Michael, however, spell pierces it, so there's no deja vu there. TJ takes 3 from the crypt and plays a Snow Forest. He casts Mana Vault and recasts Naila before passing. Michael simply plays a Snow Island and passes. Baal plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Newman and casts Sarah Ascendant before passing. Late plays an island and casts Baral, shipping it to TJ. He wins the crit roll, but loses one to the vault. He plays a Scalding Tarn and cracks it for a Hallowed Fountain to cast Dranith Magistrate. After that, he casts Deathrite Shaman and attacks with Naila at late, getting a warrior that hits Michael. On his turn, Michael plays an island and casts Ristic Study before passing. Baal instantly attacks TJ for 6 and then plays Plains and casts a Cursed Totem, not paying for the Ristic. He then ends his turn with a deafening silence, not paying for Ristic again. Late plays a Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a tropical island. He then casts a Preordain, paying for the study. Bottoms one, draws the other. TJ wins the crypt roll, takes one from the vault and plays a tapped stomping ground. He attacks Baal with Naila and his warriors and Dranith as well, since the totem is stopping him again. Michael plays a command tower and casts Buried Alive, getting Divining Witch, Dimir Guild Mage and Lab Maniac. He just needs some more mana and drain it out for Lazav to do its thing. Baal plays a planes and attacks with Sarah at Michael this time around. He finishes his turn with Thalia Reti Cathar, paying one for the study. On his end step, Late casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding a Rite of Flame and not paying for the study. On his turn, he plays a tab Misty Rainforest and casts Time Twister, not paying for the study. His end is a bit useless, but Michael's seems to be good enough for him to cast a Swan Song. TJ wins the crypt roll, takes one from the vault and plays a carpet of flowers, paying for the study. He attacks with Naila and three warriors at Michael and four warriors go at Leite, who blocks two. He then passes. Michael plays a Snow Swamp and casts a Dimir Signet before passing. Baal goes to attacks, swinging nine at TJ, who champs Thalia with death right. Baal then plays an Emeria Sky Ruin and passes. Leite plays a Mountain and attacks Baal for three. He passes without much to do. TJ wins the crit roll and takes one from the vault. He casts a Chromox, paying the one with the help of Carpet. He imprints a Demonic Consultation and swings even more creatures at Baal, in hopes to get him below the threshold for Ascendant. He passes to Michael, who simply plays a Codex Shredder and passes, hoping to start filling his graveyard. Baal keeps the beating, going at TJ for 9. 
Unlike last game, Ball is flooded and plays another planes before passing. They cracks his fetch at the end step, getting a breeding pull. He is also on the flood side, playing a gemstone caverns and casting an overmaster, not paying the one. He then attacks TJ with a bird and Ball with Baral. On his end step, TJ fires an assassin's trophy at the cursed totem, and we might be looking at an end game here. TJ keeps winning them crit rolls, but at least Vault is helping the table to deal with him. He goes to combat and at the beginning of combat step, Michael fires a drowning the lock at Naila, so no more warriors are generated and the table might survive a bit longer. TJ still swings with 10 warriors at Pal to put him below the 30 life. He passes without casting Naila to hold up some interaction. In his end step, Michael activates Codex Shredder, milling himself an arcane signet. On his turn, he does a Drago and we seem to be in a small Mexican standoff. Ball goes directly at the red zone, with both creatures going at TJ, which blocks both. Ball gains one life and Sarah becomes a 6-6 again, with one damage marked on it. He plays a Nomad Stadium and on his end step, TJ fires a Swords to Plowshares at the bird, hoping to gain just enough time to survive. He does pay the one. They draws and casts a Soul Ring, also paying for the Ristic. He attacks Ball and passes. On his end step, TJ flashes a Notion Thief, paying for the Ristic. TJ finally loses the crit roll and is closing to the red zone. He pays to untap the mana vault and hopes for a wheel from the top, but doesn't get to draw one. He adds 4 from carpet and casts Naila, not paying the study, like everyone else now, as long as Notion Thief is on the field. He goes to combat and attacks with 8 warriors, getting 8 more. 10 go at Baal, while 6 go at Michael. He passes the turn, leaving his fate to the RNG gods. On his end step, Michael activates Shredder, milling an opposition agent. He starts his turn with a tapped flooded strand and then casts a walking ballista for 2, holding up 2 mana for some interaction. Bal plays yet another planes and passes too late. He casts an Etherflux reservoir, hoping to slowly regain some life and passes the turn. TJ rolls for the crypt and wins the roll. He has 4 blue from carpet and uses 2 to cast the Revy, in hopes to win this grindy match. However, Michael responds with a mana drain. Without further responses, he moves to combat and with 18 tokens on the field, Michael shoots Naila with his Ballista. So TJ's frontline doesn't go above 40. He does swing all 18 warriors at Michael, who just doubled up on preventing him from winning now. On his turn, he gets 3 mana from Mana Drain, uses some to cast Praetor's Grasp onto late and gets a snap, hoping to gain 1 turn if TJ dies to the crypt. He then uses the last mana to crack his Shredder to get Divining Witch back to his hand and cracks his Flooded Strength for an island to play the Divining Witch. Note that it should enter tapped, but at this point everyone forgot what could and could not be done. On Ball's turn, he swings with both creatures at Michael, who jumps Thalia. The Thalia replacement effect changes the outcome here, but it won't matter much as you will see later. The flood continues, but this plane actually gets Emiria online. He casts a Gideon of the Trials and uses his last ability, creating an emblem preventing opponents from winning the game as long as he controls a Gideon Planeswalker. He passes. Late to draws and plays an Inventor's Fair. He casts a Jeweled Lotus, gaining one from the Reservoir and takes down Michael. There goes our guest. He passes the turn and on TJ's upkeep, the RNG gods say... nope. The creep takes him down. On Ball's turn, he activates Gideon, transforming him in a 4-4 and swings with everything at late. He takes 8 and then Ball plays his Serra Sanctum and casts an uncounterable Darian King of Keldor, before passing. Late gains 1 from the fair, draws and plays a tapped Scalding Tarn, and then cracks the fair, looking for a way out. He gets a Cloudstone Cure in dire hopes for an outlet. He casts it, gaining 1 from the reservoir and then casts Kaidel, gaining 2 before passing. On his end step, Ball taps the stadium, dealing 1 damage to him, getting a soldier from Darian. Ball activates Gideon again and swings with everything at Late, who blocks the soldier and Serra. On his upkeep, Late cracks the fetch for an island and draws and plays a flooded strand. He swings with both creatures at Gideon, which seems unprotected, but Ball activates the stadium, pinging himself for another soldier to jump block Kaidel. He passes and on Ball's upkeep, Emeria brings Serra's Ascendant to the battlefield. He activates Gideon again and goes to the red zone. On his second main phase, he tries another nail in the coffin with a damping sphere, but late responds with a Pact of Negation, gaining one and hoping to top deck something next turn. On his upkeep, he cracks the strand for another island, hoping to thin down the deck. Pays for the Pact, draws and casts LED, gaining one life and passes the turn. On his end step, poppings himself again for another soldier. He activates Gideon right away and keeps up with the pummeling. Late jumps to Gideon hoping to get something, but the next card is another land, so he scoops it up. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. How many times did you win over split-second Angel's Grace? Well, Late did it. 
and after the drought comes the flood and Ball managed to keep the pressure with enough stacks to end the game. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Heated Chill, Dragon Housecat, V, RJ, Starfall and Brandon Glazebrook, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!